Hello, my wonderful pen friends. Welcome back to The Pen Habit. In this episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about ultrasonic cleaners. So if you've been around the hobby for a little while, you have likely heard people refer to ultrasonic cleaners as a way to help you with the pen cleaning process. And before we get into that, let me, let me take a little bit of time to talk about fountain pen maintenance. In the older days of fountain pens, the likelihood is you would have a pen, maybe a couple of pens, you would have a bottle of ink, you would fill from the same bottle of ink over and over and over again. It wasn't like today where most, most people didn't have 100 bottles of ink in different colors on the shelves on the walls behind them. And so uh, the, the, the modern problem of ink switching is one that is fairly recent to the fountain pen hobby. Uh, it's not completely new, but it is fairly recent. And so that has uh, brought about a rise of, of pen maintenance, making sure that you've got your pen clean after you're finished with it. So the next time you ink it up with perhaps a completely different ink from a different manufacturer and a completely different color, you're not going to have any cross-contamination no issues with ink drying out in the pen, clogging the feeds. The other problem is modern feeds have very, very tiny ink channels compared to older feeds. Older vintage feeds had much wider ink channels and in generally speaking, a much more generous ink flow. And so you ran into slightly fewer problems with ink kind of clogging those very narrow channels. So a lot of people have come to look at ultrasonic cleaners as a solution to some of the cleaning problems. And this is what it probably looks like. You take this, you take a pen into the, you know, the, the sink to wash it out. And maybe it's a pen you forgot was inked and it's been inked for a month and a half with a really, really saturated dark blue. And it's a piston filler, so you can't really take it apart. And you stand there for 30 minutes, you flush and flush and flush and flush, and the water will not run clean. You just can't get it all the way clean. That's a really good chance to use an ultrasonic cleaner. I do not use an ultrasonic cleaner every time I clean my pens. I'd say maybe one in every four times I have a, an issue or an ink that is so stubborn, I need to pull out the ultrasonic cleaner. And this is the ultrasonic cleaner that I use. It is kind of a generic no-name ultrasonic cleaner. I got it for $25 on Amazon. Um, it's very simple. It has two buttons, an on and an off. The on puts it through a three-minute cycle, and the off turns it off, and there's a little light on the inside. And then it comes with this little plastic basket and a metal interior. And underneath the metal interior, there's a little device that vibrates very fast. Sounds like this. It's, it's not a pleasant sound, but, uh, but it comes through like that, and, uh, and it vibrates whatever's in here very quickly. Now, you'll notice I've got this filled with clean water. It's normally what I use when I use my ultrasonic cleaner. You could use dish soap. You could use pen flush if you wanted to fill this whole thing. We'll talk about pen flush in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Delta journal. Now, it's mostly clean. I cleaned it a while back, but it's maybe not as clean as I would like. So um, what I normally do is I take my pen after I flush the majority of the ink out of it and I keep sucking ink in. You'll notice, oh, I've got a little bit of ink here that seems to come off on the plunger every time I fill this pen up. It's a dark purple ink. So there's something going on in here. So what I will normally do is fill it up with water stick it in here, nib down so the nib is kind of in contact with the bottom. And I, I don't generally submerge my whole pen. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment too. And then I turn it on and I just let it vibrate. Now you'll notice that the vibrations are causing the ink here to, to kind of swirl and release along the edge. I don't know how well you can see that in the video here, but the ink that was kind of clinging to the side of the converter is now getting dissolved into the water. Occasionally, you'll see ink leaking out from around the section down here, uh, so you know that their ink got around the threads of the nib unit or stuck in between the nib and the side of the section. And the vibrations, I'm going to turn this off because it's annoying, uh, the vibrations just really help the water and air and ink to, to kind of get out of those little nooks and crannies where it's stuck. It can also be really helpful when you've got dried ink and you need to get it 
back in suspension, water suspension, a, an ultrasonic cleaner is a pretty good way of doing that. Um, but like I said, I don't generally submerge my pen. Now, it's not a huge issue to do that if you're talking about most modern cartridge converter pens. You can take them apart, throw the parts in here, run through the ultrasonic cleaner. You're probably going to be fine. Where I would start to get a little leery about that is piston fillers, lever fillers, vacuum fillers, anything where you have to put all the mechanism that really doesn't need to be in the ultrasonic cleaner. I also would not submerge the pen if you're dealing with ebonites, which will discolor when soaked in water, celluloids, and especially caseins. So that, that, that milk-based plastic that was used pretty heavily in the 40s and 50s and I think 60s, uh, especially by Conway Stewart, will actually melt in being soaked in water. So you want to be careful about that. Um, you know, a minute or two probably isn't going to be a huge deal, uh, but don't leave it soaking in here for a long time. And if you do have to use a vintage pen, maybe take the nib out. Don't submerge the whole pen, only the parts that really, really need it. Sometimes I will need to do, um, where did I put it here? Oh, I left it in the other room. Sometimes the cap will get ink in it. And I find just dropping the cap in the ultrasonic cleaner is a pretty good way to do that. If you get something that's really, really stubborn, I'm going to go ahead and clean this, this water out here. Um, if you get something that's really stubborn, you might want to look at pen flush. Now, pen flush comes in a variety of flavors. I've got a few here. This is um, the Pen Chalet pen flush that I got at the Pelican Hub. I haven't even opened this bottle yet, so I don't know how well it works, but uh, I got that from the good folks at Pen Chalet. You've got Goulet Pens Flush. There's another pen flush called a JB's Perfect Flush or something like that. And then there is this one that I got from Indie Pen Dance. I'm sure you can get it in other places as well, called uh, Rapido Ease. And this is a concentrate and it says, you know, here for technical and calligraphy pens, all inking nibs, airbrushes, etc. So I suspect that this is um, probably a little bit stronger than some of these other ones. You can also make your own uh, pen flush for, you know, maybe I think it's 10% ammonia, 90% distilled water, and maybe a drop or two of dish soap, and, and that should help a little bit too. But what I'll do is, rather than fill the whole reservoir with pen flushes, I get a little uh, shot glass like this and fill it up with pen flush so I don't have to fill this whole reservoir and then throw it away when it gets contaminated. And I, I learned that little trick from, uh, from the folks at Independence when they repaired one of my pens at the DC show in 2016. But I'll, I'll fill up my pens so I've got you know, you, you saw that that purple, and oh my goodness, look at what happened this time. I got a little more purple in here. It's getting better, though. It's not as uh, as dark as it was before. And then I'll just put the whole thing in the shot glass like that and turn it on. Thanks to the magic of internet video, I'm not going to subject you to that sound for very long. Um, you know, once you've done that, you empty out the pen flush and fill it up with clean water a time or two and see how it does. So I'm just going to fill this up with clean water, and what do you know? It's running pretty clear. So that worked well. This is a technique I really like to use with my piston fillers or vacuum fillers, not submerging the whole pen, but actually just using this to submerge the nib unit. The reason I like that is a lot of times it, it's very difficult to take those pens apart. And so cleaning them becomes a real hassle. I have a, a very expensive Tobaldi Impero that I had inked with a dark blue ink. And it was a safe ink, but I had forgotten I'd inked the pen because I forgot to write it in my ink journal and put it away in my pen case and left it there for about three months. And so the ink didn't dry, but it thickened up and I had a beast of a time cleaning it out. So I, I you know, got rid of the old ink, flushed it with water, and I probably twisted that piston for five minutes straight trying to get the ink clean, and I just couldn't. So I filled it up with a little bit of pen flush in this shot glass, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and let it run for a couple minutes. And I had to, I had to repeat that twice. Once I did that, I was able to flush it clean, and I was good to go. So, you know, those really rapid vibrations can potentially be a little bit harmful to really delicate parts of pens, you know, particularly in vintage pens with you've got 
you know, very fine cap bands or very fine lever fillers, that sort of thing. I've never really had this damage my pens in any way, but I, I suppose it's possible. So you just want to be careful and and use it only when you need it. You don't need to to throw a pen in the ultrasonic cleaner every single time you clean it out. It's also really good when you're restoring pens to to get off years of dried ink on the inside of the cap or you know I a lot of times will uh, when with vintage pens I'll take the nib and the feed out and they're both usually crusted with old ink and I'll just scrub them with a, a soft toothbrush a little bit very gently and then I'll drop them in the water bath and let it run for for three minutes and pull them out and scrub again I don't let it soak especially not those ebonite feeds you don't want to screw those up but I do you know I will run it through with the ultrasonic cleaner I never run my vintage pens the whole pen through the cleaner, and I never submerge the whole pen. I only ever submerge the parts that need the cleaning. So that's how I use it. I'll kind of wrap up on one final note about cleaning pens, and that is I think we can, as hobbyists, tend to get more anal retentive about this than we really need to. It's good to have your pens clean. It's good not to let the ink dry in them. I, I totally agree with that. I don't know that we need to get always to the point where our pens run crystal clear, uh, where the water runs crystal clear. If you don't care about minor variations in ink color, um, I don't think it matters all that much. You have diluted the ink so much in your pen with the water that any residual amount that remains, you know, there's, there's still a tiny little bit of purple ink in this converter here. It's not 100% clear, but it is, as my dad always said, close enough for government work. So, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about this. There might be a little bit of staining on here, but it's not the end of the world. So just remember that, you know, our, a long time ago, people didn't use ultrasonic cleaners, they probably didn't clean their pens all that often. They just inked up with the same ink over and over and over again until the pen stopped working. Then they took it to their pen store and said, hey, it stopped working. And the pen store probably ended up cleaning it. But if you are doing the kind of work or switching between inks that really do, are, that really are stubborn, really have a hard time getting out of the pen, then an ultrasonic cleaner can be a really valuable tool in your arsenal. So hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them down in the comment section here on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. I would also love to hear how you use your ultrasonic cleaner if you have one. I will have links to this ultrasonic cleaner and some of the pen flushes that I talked about, as well as a couple of others that I didn't mention here over on in the show notes on penhabit.com, so you can check that out over there. And of course, don't forget to head out and check out the Inky Fingers Notebook line if you don't have any over on penhabit.com as well. So hopefully this was helpful and we will see you here soon for another video. Take care. Bye.